Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lori Lamantia. Hi, and I'm Trisha Fisk. And today we're going to talk about the power of letting go, um, releasing, forgiving, the energies of letting go so that we can align to the flow of abundance. Um, uh, this past weekend, we had a lunar eclipse and a full moon. So this is a really wonderful time to experience ourselves letting go and releasing anything that isn't serving us, that isn't in our highest and best good going forward in this beautiful time of abundance and spring and possibility. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about some experiences we've had as we move into letting go. And Trisha's got some reading that she'd like to do. And so we're just going to explore this, the power of letting go. Um, Trish, do you want to add your part here? Yeah. So I don't know a lot about astrology, or, um, but I have a friend who puts out a lovely newsletter every month about the full moon and then the new moon and the sign it's in and what its qualities are and things like that. So Mariana Von Wall, this is a shout out to you for your lovely newsletter that you put out. Um, but this particular moon is in Libra, which is harmonious and balancing. And she says that eclipses typically set us up for major shifts in our lives for positive change. And this is a penumbral lunar eclipse. The earth stands between the sun and the moon and the moon falls into the earth's shadow, dimming its reflective glow. And that eclipses are stronger than regular new and full moons with longer lasting effects. And their influence can last from six to 12 months. So when it's a lunar eclipse, there's an emotion-based and relationship component to it. So they encourage us to let go of emotions, the past, and attachments that no longer serve us. This lunar eclipse is laying the groundwork with us for a new beginning in the Aries total solar eclipse coming on April 8th. So it's kind of this whole time from now until then is perfect for us to think about what do we want to let go of what isn't serving us and to pay attention to the stuff that's coming up and this is something that Lori and I talk about sometimes when something from the past comes up it's like oh god where that, that's still there and that's like the last thing I want to think about and what this is saying is it's inviting you to let go of it if it's still coming up then in some way you're still holding on to it somewhere in your body or your emotional body, you're still holding on to it. So in this cycle in particular, as you have things that come up, pay attention to them with the idea and the permission that it's coming up so you can consciously and with intention, let it go, which is beautiful. It's a mm -hmm. beautiful opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I I think, you know, especially now and going forward, there's a there's a lot of clearing that is happening. Um, you know, I think it's accelerated around these uh excel moons and eclipses, but I think it's kind of, you know, life as usual for where we're going, which is this, you know, beautiful um, unity experience where we are, you know, and part of why we're all here is to clear and, and it's not to figure out and it's not to justify. It's really just to clear now. There is, it feels like there's no need to spend any much, any more time processing than that. Like, oh, it's here. Uh, wow. Why? Uh, you know, not so much why, but why not just let it go? Why not just be done with it so I can be free to have this flow of joy and abundance that is really being away, you know, uh, uh, I wanted to say awakened, but reinvigorated at, in many levels for this year. And I think, 
I was listening to something over the weekend about the year of the dragon. You know, the dragon is giving us that extra fiery boost, right? <laughs> you know, the 2024 is uh, the Chinese New Year is also the dragon energy. So we've got all this wonderful stuff supporting us. So um, it's really giving us the energy that we need to help fire through and 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 release these things that don't serve us anymore. It's 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 a very synchronistic and supportive time for all of us too, I feel. And I feel it in my own life. And I don't know for you, are you feeling that too, Trish? Well, I, this, so I yesterday joined a group. We did a, actually did a ritual for this and yeah, it feels, the timing feels perfect. It feels like just another way really to acknowledge that this is happening Mm -hmm. This process of this awareness of wanting to let go, especially of, you know, that just doesn't work for me anymore. I want to have some fun. I want the new chapter. Mm -hmm. And in order, right, in order for that to happen, you one really needs to step through the doorway and welcome all of that. So, um, yeah, I feel, and I talking to people who are kind of feeling the same way too, that there really is a, a shift or a change going on. And it's, I feel it's important for us again, as, and we talk about this a lot to, to choose, what do I want? Do I want to still hang out and deal with these feelings and emotions from the past or these situations, or do I want to let go of the heaviness of them, be grateful for the lessons from them and move into what do I want? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. if I don't know what I want, how do I want to feel? Right. Because right. that's, that's the, super yeah. powerful. Yeah, that's right. super powerful. You don't have to have the answers, but you know how you want to feel. I think most right. of us do. I was saying is, even if you just spent 10 minutes a day sitting and focusing on how you want to feel maybe not the stuff you want to create maybe you don't know that yet i want to go left or right or study something new but you know how you want to feel and most of us it's loved supported um you know the courage to take the risks we want to move forward all of those things to have relationships in our life that support us and, and um, partnerships and, you know, spend some time soaking in that. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just 10 minutes a day. Well, I, I, I totally want to honor what you said because, it, you know, our minds want to figure it out, but our heart and body knows the feeling we want, which is embracing and, and, and joy and, and uh, um, safety, so many things that are, you know, just real fundamental. We, last week we were talking about the first chakra and it's almost like going back there into the, you know, into that place where we are unconditionally loved and cradled in, in that love. And I, I guess I'm speaking for myself. So it's almost like we're trying, you know, that going back to that fundamental love place will blossom into these things that you're talking about relationships and experiences, you know, cause when we feel that we, uh, like you said, courage, you know, Oh, that's no big, let, I'll try that. Why not that? You know? So when we are in that safe and secure abundance place, uh, everything seems possible. And, and that, and our minds want to manage it. And that's where we get, you know, con conflicted a little bit because until we have the answer, then I can't feel that. No, that's backwards. Feeling right. it makes everything more apparent and available and clear. Um, and then the mind can just follow along and do, oh, that's what we want. Oh, got it. I'm on it. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it's a, a flip flop of that. So you're absolutely right. And the things we hang on to the mind keeps working and working, you know, the gravitational pull of those in the law of attraction, keep those 
mo, mo, uh, you know, in play and in place. So interestingly enough, the things that we are holding on to that we can't forgive are keeping them in place, right? And keeps the right. momentum going. And <clears throat> So taking time, like you said, for 10 minutes a day to change the momentum or put the momentum in the direction of what of you want to feel is a very good investment. It's a very good use of your energetic um, life force, which is one of our, you know, which is one of my teachers says the mo our superpower is the power of our attention, where we put our energy. That's our superpower. And putting right. it into old hurts, you know, that's, that's a legit, that's okay. Much better now to see it, release it, let it go, honor it. And then, you know, move on. Right. We are with our energy and our thoughts. We are always creating the next thing. You know, mm -hmm. we're always creating our future, if you will. And why not do it consciously? Okay. If you're doing it anyway, why not do it consciously and allow yourself the gift of moving towards how you want to feel, you know, and in, in this case in particular, loved, this feeling of loved and that you're already what you're seeking, right? Thich Nhat Hanh's statement, you already are what you're seeking. Come back to that feeling keep coming back to that feeling and that's the practice if you will not the tearing down of what you need to let go of and who you need to forgive but the remembering that you are divine that you were created by something divine and that's who you are and and then that the old stuff will filter up but just as a thought, right? Not as a thing you have to unpack and analyze at right. all. Yeah, it's it just a, yeah. yeah. Excellent. It point. floats up, right? It floats up as a thought that, and that's oh, isn't that interesting? And by you know, yeah, yesterday right. in in the ritual, we had the leader of the group um, actually had us put whatever it was we were releasing, whether it was a relationship or whatever into a pink bubble and just watch it float off mm -hmm. into the sky. Mm -hmm. It felt really mm -hmm. good. Well, pink is such a soothing, beautiful color. And it's the color, you know, it, I, I think we don't even realize the power of color, but yes, pink is a very <laughs> forgiving, uh, gracing energy. Um, and so putting that in there with love is freeing for whoever we're connected to or whatever relationship we're connected to and to us. Um, so I, th I think that's a beautiful visualization. And, you know, and as you're, as you're putting it into the bubble, I'm sure it was, and let it go, bless it, free yourself of it and free that. Watch it float, right. Float Watch away. it float off. Right. right. I was taking an abundance class um, through Theta and the teacher used a, a, a really powerful metaphor when he was talking about this forgiveness thing. He said, imagine there's a big like cloud or an energy bubble out, you know, outside of you. And, and in it is, he, he called it karma, but you know, here in, in it is all the, the experience and the, the thing that happened and, and the hurts and the, you know, and everything that went into that, it's like a swirling um, cloud of energy. And everybody involved in it has like an energy umbilical to that cloud, right? So everybody who ever got into, you know, whether it's a family member or a colleague or someone, any, any rando person, there, there's everybody has an energy umbilical to that cloud. And and sometimes we don't even realize it because the pat hurts were in the past, but we still have a umbilical until we actively cut it or actively choose to, you know, disconnect from that. And when you intentionally choose through, like you were just saying this, putting it in a pink bubble and letting it flow away, or just even seeing yourself cut the umbilical and saying, I'm, 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 I'm done feeding that thing and using my energy into that cloud. 
the people who are involved in it, they can still do their cloud thing, right? For whatever they need, but you are stopping the fl energy flow. And the, you know, and, and I thought that was such a really beautiful visualization, but also a very powerful energy clarity mo mo moment. Hey, snip, 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 snip. And I've got, if I have one big giant umbilical or a few little tentacles, snip, 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 you know, um, so I can be free of that energy and my energy now can return to me like you were just saying, for conscious investment, conscious choicing into whatever it is that we really want, which is love and grace and true friendships, true relationships, real partnerships, all the things that, you know, we've said in our journaling and our visualization boards <laughs> and all that stuff, you know, wow, that's what I want, you know, and as soon as we disconnect from those old clouds, we become available for true that flow. Um, it, it's interesting you mentioned that journals because every now and then I go back and I look at my journals and it's the same thing in every journal, whether it over was and over. 10, <laughs> 10 years ago or 15 years ago or five minutes ago, right? It's the same intention and and hope that i'm looking for is this connection right the right of knowing i'm loved knowing i am love knowing that that's what i attract to me and that that's what i share with it right it's the, been the same ever since i started journaling so it's kind of fun to go back and see that right i'm still seeking the still seeking the same things um right, right. diligently, diligently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes yeah yes. i i find that fascinating too when i look at my journals i'm like really again again this year <laughs> the same right. stuff you know it's right right and uh, I, I would, when we were preparing for this, I was thinking, you know, and this is another thing where we can forgive our, maybe forgive ourselves or let go of, because I do think the journey, this is all perfect, you know, and the journals are reminding us how diligent we are, how committed we are, how, how much this matters to us. And, and I think that journey also allows us at some point to go, hey, I've been a good I've been doing this. I've been, I was going to say good, <laughs> but I don't think it's good. I think it's perfect. I think it's, it's this perfect unfoldment of our Godding essence, you know, giving, having this experience that it wanted to have. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about that this is a perfect unfoldment of this plan that we all put together. It might seem not so perfect as we're going through it, um, I rally against it and I, you know, fist, scream sometimes, but after a while I look back at my journals and I have seen how much progress I'm making and how my heart is finally starting to be willing to open and in love and be loved and accept the divine graces that are flowing and see them and notice them and not just let them fly past me because I'm too busy micromanaging nothing, you know, which also <laughs> comes up in my journals a lot. <laughs> uh, one of the things when um, I was, cause I didn't get to participate yesterday with you guys, but I did my own releasing ceremony and, and the thing I was releasing, I decided, interestingly enough, as I checked in was this forgetting. I'm ready to release forgetting, you know, and part of the seeking thing it, in that whole, I for, forget so that I can remember and go, oh yeah, I'm divine. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of fun. It's like having a mini celebration, like, oh yeah, but um. I think I'm ready to let go of forgetting that I'm divine and living in it. And and I think it goes back to your your thing that you had in your Nidra one day. So what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis when you're not forgetting? Right. Well, and I think I've come to the decision that I don't know what it looks like, but I can focus on what it feels like. 
Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Because what it looks like keeps taking me back into my head and measuring. So, okay, what is abundance? Is And it goes back to being stuff or things. But if I keep it as a feeling sense, how does it feel? Mm-hmm. Then that's more spacious so and more much. allowing. Right. And more it, open to, yeah. It's big. More, more open to grace. Mm-hmm. It feels like it. It feels like it makes space for all kinds of unexpected possibilities. When, right. Yeah. When we can do yeah, that. Yeah. So that question has changed. It's not, what does it look like? It's how does it feel? Right. Yeah. And that's, that's really powerful for all of us, you know, because we know how it feels inside of us. That's why it's a unique experience. I think that's why our divine soul brought us here under whatever perfect circumstance, your perfect family, your perfect ex- environment. It brought us here so it could have that unique experience. Um, and what does it feel like having a divine experience in the middle of my particular unique life is really a cool thing, right? Because mm-hmm. it can yes. never happen. I can never, I can't Trish, only you can Trisha and you can't Lori, only I can Lori, you know, and that's what makes it cool, right? When Trisha's Trishing and Lori's Lorying in our own divine way, it's magic, right? And you guys all got together yesterday. It was magical, right? It was. And it's another reason to remember gratitude. Although we don't like all the life experiences we've had and, and, you know, most of us have had some pretty horrible stuff happen too, but it does create, bring us to where we are now. It does make and build our character for who and what we are now. So those experiences are valuable, even if they're not pleasant. Well, they help us re- remember. And that's the right. whole, like you said, the, the reason why we come here is to remember and and that our that our god our godliness our unique godliness and as we remember we become a beacon and a radiator of that and then people who don't even need to talk to us you know they're just touched by that you know i i'll call that the jesus factor or you know when you're in the middle in, in the presence of anyone who has self realization but even a modicum of it, it doesn't have to be, you know, Jesus or um, Yogananda. You still get a lot of good juju off of that, from that. Right, right. Um, and I, I do believe that because I believe in the energy. I believe in, I believe very fully in the idea of energy, not just that I have to see it to believe it. It's happening because we're talking on a wireless right now. Somehow, I've never seen how we've connect. I don't know how phones talk to each other without wires, but they do. And if that could happen, and if the moon can move tides, and if energy can come from wind and all the stuff my brain can't even possibly conceive of, like how blood is flowing through my body right now, I didn't have anything to do with that. And if I can conceive, if I can just know that that's happening, somehow, all this divine perfection is happening too, right? I can, I right. can, I can do that. I can, right? <laughs> I remember years ago reading autobiography of the yogi by Yogananda, and I remember him saying, and I'm paraphrasing, but you know, if you decide that you want a chair, and you don't have any doubts or limiting beliefs about that that chair is just going to show up a friend, a neighbor, um, or when you're out, whatever. But the only thing that ever is in the way of that chair showing up is any limiting beliefs that you hold yourself about receiving that chair. And that I've remembered that that has stayed with me all along. So um, right. When you're, as you're remembering, and deciding to not forget anymore. 
there's nothing standing in the in your in your way. There's nothing standing in the way of that, That's, other than what you've created, right? Right. That's the flow. That's. That's like asking it's given, you know, seek and you shall find. I mean, really, it's everything we could, any experience we want is here and it's available and it doesn't have to be earned. It's like you said, it's just right. that some mental thing that comes up that goes, hey, that's not possible. And it's like, I take a breath and I say, wait a second, I remember it's totally possible. It's already here. It's already here. It's Feels a beautiful like thing. thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. All right. I So I'd like to throw in a quote here. Life is a delicate dance between holding on and letting go. Finding balance in the ever-changing rhythms of existence. By Alu Denish. Mm. So find your balance between holding on and letting go. Yes. And the things that you hold on to are the love and the grace and the beauty and the abundance. And we like gratitude. Of, yeah, and gratitude. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and the things we let go of are the things that are old, that don't serve us anymore, that don't fit. It's like a pair of pants. I've got tons of them I still have to let go of. Happy to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like this garbage bag in my closet for goodwill that I keep throwing things. Right. Into. Yeah. Let go, let go, <laughs> let go. Right. Hey, and Elsa's right. been telling, let it go, let it go. There's a reason why that was a giant song. Right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so as um this week, as you sit in that 10 minutes of felt grace, abundance, love. And then if something percolates up, you know, put on the Let It Go song and say thank you, pink bubble it, clip, clip the umbilical, and that. Every little bit goes towards the allowing of the flow and the beauty and the grace. That's already here. Thanks, Trish. This is beautiful. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for joining us.